very close to me. I wouldn't say I owned him because I always owed it to Harold Ramis's interpretation. But, you know, I, um, he became a part of me, you know, and um, I, I, I loved playing him because he was essentially a very um, moral character. He had a very strict code. Um, he was an oddball. Goodness knows I never felt that way. And, um, you know, he just wanted to fit. He wanted to fit, but he was, he was saddled with this brilliance that he saw things in just a different way than everybody else. So he would come up with the odd, off thing to say. There was one scene I remember with Egon where he's, or um, Winston, excuse me, is having a birthday party. And Egon's supposed to just step into the frame and go, I'm having a wonderful time. But they, the way you, they animated it, unfortunately, you know, because a character, the character couldn't have that much uh, movement in his face anyway, it didn't come across as deadpan as it should. But in the studio when we did it, uh, you know, uh, you know, Arsenio, uh, as, as Winston goes, Egon, you enjoying yourself? He goes, and I, I would go, I'm having a wonderful time. And I was so deadpan, we both cracked up because the idea behind that is he's telling the truth. This is him having a wonderful time. <laughs> we rarely played Egon laughing. Um, I just really had a great time, even with all the with all the cast changes, because I won't say even with, because I grew very fond of everybody who came onto the show and missed the people who left. But uh, you know, seven years of playing that, even though you don't go into an office, you know, it's not like a regular job where you go into an office. But we recorded the show twice a week because we were making both the network package and the syndicated package. And we could somehow, for, for, for some reason or other, we could do more in the syndicated package. We could get away with more because we weren't strictly Saturday morning. So you saw more of Venkman, uh, you know, hitting on the ladies, um, th that type of thing. Um, you know, the monsters were a little grosser. There was a little more, you know, slimy, that type of thing. Um, but it, it was, when it finally all came to an end, I almost couldn't believe it. I was like, really? I thought I was going to get to do this forever. I've only been on a few shows that have lasted that long. I've learned, of course, in my in, in the course of my career, nothing really lasts forever. And yet, thanks to you know DVD and home video, you really it actually does. <laughs> and uh, it's been a show that's been very near and dear to my heart. Looking back over the life of the show, I mean, it was seven years. But it's now, it's 23 years since we did the first episode. And I still get fan mail. Uh, when I go to a convention like the Comic-Con, I still get a whole bunch of Egon questions. And it's 23 years later, and what's happened is, the kids, the little kids who sat with their, you know, their bowl of, uh, of Cheerios watching the Ghostbusters on Saturday mornings now are, are grown-ups and they want to relive their childhood. So something like what we're doing here is great for, great for them, great for me, because I'm still a big kid. I still watch cartoons. Um, you know, uh, so I'm amazed though. The staying power, there's, really, there's been a few shows I've been on that have had tremendous staying power, very few. This is the first of those, and I'm, it's held on the longest. Uh, so I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I think in large part is due to the fact that we had such clever writing. I mean, really, the writers wrote these shows as though they were continuations of the movie. So, you know, uh, Joe Straczynski, who went on to create Babylon 5, Mark Scott and Zick Ree, um, you know, was just an incredibly talented, brilliant writer, and he's doing some things with Star Trek right now that are unbelievable. Um, and the foremost expert on Rod Serling and the Twilight Zone. Uh, you know, bright, bright guys writing this show. If you truly want to be a fan of the Ghostbusters and show your devotion, I highly suggest the hobby of collecting spores, mold, and fungus. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>